Hello and welcome to your practice. This practice is 12 poses for osteoporosis or for better bone health. Um, there was a study done by the National Institute of Health. It was a 10 year study from 2005 to 2015 and they followed 741 participants. They checked them pre-yoga, they checked their bone density before they did any yoga. They followed them through the program, these 10 years, and they checked their bone mineral density after yoga, after the program. And what they found was that when these people did these 12 poses daily, or at the minimum every other day, their bone mineral density increased, it went up in their spine, in their hips, and in the femur. So the femur is the big bone in the upper thigh that comes up and goes, fits into that hip socket. So it increases strength in all of those areas. So this practice, I'm gonna show you 12 poses to build better bones to help with osteoporosis. And the poses are gonna be pretty simple to do. We're gonna do them on each side. Some poses have one side and then we'll do the other. We're gonna hold the poses about 30 seconds on each side. And what you, you will need is a strap for one of the poses. So this is a yoga strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, you can use a bathrobe tie or a belt or um, a man's necktie, something like that, but not a stretchy strap. We want a, a, a non-stretchy strap. And then maybe a chair for um, the balance pose. The first pose we're going to do is tree pose. So you can always use a chair for a balance pose. Um, or you can use a wall or something um, to help you keep your balance. So on the first side, I'm going to show you with a chair. We're going to, without further ado, we're going to get started with these 12 poses to build better bones. So we're going to, for, for tree pose, we're going to stand with our feet hip width apart. Let's have our left hand on the chair, right hand on the right hip. We're going to shift all of the weight into the left foot. And we're going to lift our right heel and let's slide the right heel over till that right heel touches the left shin or the left ankle. So you can stay there with your right toes just barely on the ground. Or you can lift that right foot and place it on the inner left calf. We kind of want that right knee to open out. So working, opening, stretching this hip, but strengthening this hip and this, this femur. So we're going to stand with our right hand on the right hip left hand on the chair. Belly pulls in and up. There's a tiny little micro bend in our left leg. The standing leg has a tiny little micro bend. Lifting the heart, lifting the chest. You can practice maybe lifting that hand off the chair. Maybe bringing it to the hip or maybe just leaving it lightly on the chair. You're still getting all of the benefit. Even if your right toes are on the ground, lightly touching the ground and the left hand on the chair, this standing leg is getting all of the benefits. So don't worry, you're getting all of the benefit here. Good, a couple nice breaths. Try to focus on a spot that's not moving. That'll help you with your balance. We're gonna come out of this side. So we're gonna bring that right foot down, right hand down. Shake that out a little bit. The other side, I'm gonna show you without a chair. Okay, so we're gonna stand, feet hip width apart. We'll start with hands on the hips. Standing nice and tall, we're going to shift the weight into the right foot, lift the left heel. We're going to slide the left heel over until it touches the right leg. So we can stay right there with those left toes just barely touching the ground. Belly pulls in a little bit, heart lifts. We can try maybe lifting that left foot up and bringing it on the inner left, inner right calf. Good. Now hands can stay on the hips. Hands can come to namaste at the heart, or hands can come up overhead, palms touching. Little tiny micro bend in that right leg. We're breathing, we're lifting the heart, belly pulling in and up. Try to focus on a spot not moving. And we're gonna come out of this pose. We're gonna bring everything down. Left foot comes down, we're gonna shake it out. Perfect. Pose number two is triangle pose. So we're gonna take a wide leg stance on our mat. Right toes are gonna to turn out to the right, left heel shifts back a little bit. So we wanna line up, we wanna build our foundation from the ground up. We're gonna line up our right heel with our left arch. Hips and shoulders are gonna face the long edge of the mat. We're gonna be hinging 
from this right hip. We're going to lean to the right and hinge, lean to the right. We're tucking that right hip under. Okay, so we're going to inhale, arms to shoulder level. Exhale, relax the shoulders. Keep this right rib cage long, and we're going to lean to the right. Tuck that right hip under. Left hip is going to lift a little bit. Bring the right hand to the right leg, and the left hand can come up. If that bothers the left shoulder, bring the left hand to the left hip. Keep tucking that right hip under. You're going to get a good stretch on this inner right thigh. We want the right rib cage long, so we don't want to crunch that right rib cage. Right rib cage is long, and we can lift that left hand, and we're breathing. Press both feet evenly, equally into the floor. Strong legs, nice stretch on this inner right thigh. We're going to come out of it. Bring the left hand to the left hip. We're going to inhale and come up. Parallel your feet, and let's switch and do the other side. Left toes turn to the left. Right heel shifts back. We want to line up that left heel right arch. Your feet are about three, three and a half feet apart, so not too close. We're going to inhale, arms to shoulder level. Exhale, relax the shoulders. Inhale again, exhale, and we're going to lean to the left, hinging from that hip. So the left hip drops and kind of tucks under, right hip kind of rolls up. When you can't reach anymore, bring the left hand to the left leg. Keep that left rib cage long. Right hand can come up or right hand can stay on the right hip. Keep tucking that left hip under. Keep that left rib cage long. Nice big breaths. Good. We get a good stretch on this inner left thigh here. Big breaths, even steady breaths. We're going to come out of it. Bring the right hand to the right hip. We're going to inhale and come up. Parallel your feet. We'll step the feet together. Shake it out. Next pose is warrior two. It's going to be the same setup for our feet. So wide leg stance, our feet are three, three and a half feet apart. Right toes turn to the right, left heel shifts back. We're going to line up right heel and left arch. We keep facing the long edge of the mat. Don't turn to the right. That is going to turn your hips, and we want our hips to be facing that long edge of the mat. On warrior two, we're going to bend the right knee. Right knee stacks over the right heel. Shoulders stack over the hips. Let's inhale, the arms to shoulder level. Exhale, relax the shoulders. Scoop the belly in and up. Turn and look over the right fingertips. Press both feet evenly, equally, firmly into the floor. Your right knee is going to kind of open out towards your right pinky toe. Relax the shoulders down. Keep the arms lifting. So just this, the act of lifting the arms helps to strengthen the shoulders, the arms, the spine. Good. We're going to come out of it. So we'll lower the arms down. We're going to straighten the right leg and we're going to parallel the feet. We're going to go take it to the other side. Left toes turn to the left. Right heel shifts back. Hips and shoulders face the long edge of the mat. Bend your left knee. Left knee stacks over left heel. Left knee is going to open out towards the left a little bit. Shoulders stack right over the hips. So we don't want to lean to that bent knee side. Shoulders stack over the hips. Inhale, arms to shoulder level. Exhale, relax your shoulders. Lift your heart. Pull your belly in and up. Turn and look over left fingertips. Good. So feel the strength in the arms. Hands reaching apart. Heart lifting. Shoulders relax. Belly scoops in and up. Press both feet evenly, equally into the mat. So strong legs. Feel that come all the way up into the muscles, into the hips. Good. Nice even breaths. We're going to come out of this. So lower the arms, straighten the left knee, parallel your feet. We'll step the feet together. Shake it out a little bit. Pose number four is side angle pose. Same kind of setup for our legs. Wide leg stance, right toes turn to the right, left heel shifts back. We keep facing that long edge of the mat. We're going to bend the right knee. Right knee stacks over the right heel. Left hand on the left hip. We're going to hinge. We're going to lean over this right thigh, and we're going to bring our right forearm to the right thigh. Top shoulder is going to roll back, and we want to firmly press that left foot down into the floor. That left leg is long. Try not to bend the left knee. You can keep the left hand on the left hip. You can lift the left arm straight up, or you can bring the left arm by your left ear. If you bring the left arm by the left ear, try to have a long line of energy from your left fingertips, down the left arm, down the left rib cage, all the way down that left leg to the left heel. Good. Breathing, 
strong, firm legs, both feet press evenly, equally into the floor. I'm gonna come out of it, bring the left hand to the left hip, and we're gonna inhale and come up, straighten that right leg, drop the arms, parallel your feet. Let's take it to the other side. Left toes turn to the left, right heel shifts back, line up, left heel, right arch. Face the long edge of the mat. Try not to turn the hips. Bend your left knee, left knee stacks over the left heel. Right hand on the right hip. Inhale, with your exhale, hinge over that left thigh and bring your left forearm to the left thigh. Top shoulder is gonna roll back and we wanna press that right foot into the floor. No bend in that right leg. Both feet pressing firmly, evenly, equally into the floor. Right hand can stay on right hip. Right hand can lift straight up. Right arm can come by right ear. And this is where we want that long line of energy from the right fingertips all the way down through the right heel. Big breaths. Good. And we're going to come out of it. So let's bring the right hand to the right hip. We're going to inhale. We're going to come up. Straighten that right leg, uh, left leg parallel the feet. And we're going to step the feet together. Shake it out a little bit. Pose number five, revolved triangle. We're going to separate the feet nice and wide, same stance. Turn right toes to the right, left heel shifts back. We're going to line up right heel, left arch. Now here, we are going to turn our hips. So we're going to turn towards our right foot, look towards our right foot. Hands on the hips. We're going to hinge over and bring your left hand to your right thigh. And we're going to turn to the right a little bit. So looking over to that right side, we're rotating those hips around. Breathing. Front leg is straight. Weight on both feet even and equal. Good. We're going to rotate back to forward. Inhale, come up and come back to center. Good. Parallel your feet. Let's take that revolved triangle to the other side. Left toes turn to the left. Right heel shifts back hands on the hips, and now here we are gonna turn. We're turning towards that left foot. We're gonna bring the left, the right hand to the left thigh, hinge forward, and we're gonna turn to the left. So it's a little bit of a balance. You can always have a chair on your side, on one side or the other for a little balance. Breathing, rotating, pull that left hip back. Good, we're gonna come to forward. Hinge back up and come back to center. Good. Parallel the feet. Step the feet together. Shake it out. Very good. We're going to come down to the mat for pose number six is locust pose. So have your little strap handy. We'll, we'll need it in a couple poses. Come down. We're going to come down onto our belly for locust pose. So stretching all the way down onto your belly. Arms are going to be down by your side. Palms are up. Foreheads down towards the mat. We're going to firm up our legs, firm up our bottom, keep the whole lower body nice and firm. We're going to inhale and lift the arms, lift the head, lift the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and now lift your feet. So squeeze the glutes, lift the feet. The neck is long. Don't lift your chin too high. All right, the back of the neck is long. Keep squeezing shoulder blades together. Keep the legs firm, bottom firm, reaching those hands back and breathing into the belly. Good, couple more breaths. And we're gonna lower all the weight down to the mat. Stack your hands, rest your hands, rest your head on stacked hands. Curl the toes under, push the heels back behind you. Let your knees lift up off the floor. So just a nice stretch for the legs and the hips. Slide your hands under the shoulders, and we're gonna lift ourselves up into hands and knees. We're gonna come all the way down onto our back for pose number seven is bridge pose. So coming all the way down onto your back, grab that strap, have it next to you so you don't have to reach too far. Come all the way down onto your back. Center yourself on the mat. For bridge pose, we're gonna have our knees bent. Our knees are stacked over our heels, feet hip width apart. Arms at our side, our palms are up. We're gonna lift our hips with breath. Inhale first. Exhale, press your waistline down into the mat. And inhale, lead with your hips and lift the hips up as high as feels good. 
Now press the shoulders down into the floor. You might even walk them together a little bit. Press the backs of the arms into the floor. Bring your awareness to your feet. Both feet are even and equal into the mat. All the toes are touching the floor. Your belly is soft. It rises with the inhale and falls with the exhale. Your bottom slightly firm. Keep pressing those shoulders down into the mat. Keep lifting the hips. Lift your chest a little higher towards the chin. Breathing. We're going to come out with breath. Inhale. With your exhale, move those shoulder blades apart and lower down the spine one vertebra at a time, nice and slow. Once your hips are down, hug the knees into the chest, and we're going to roll side to side. Just roll out that back body. Bring our knees to center. Use your core. Don't let your waistline lift. We're going to bring our feet down to the floor. Here's where you want that strap. So grab your strap, pose number eight. Supta Padangustasana, it translates, that's a Sanskrit term, translates to reclining big toe pose. So we're going to use a strap to help us um, touch the toes. So we're going to keep our left knee bent, bring that right knee in, and wrap the strap around the bottom of the right foot, and we're going to stretch our right foot up to the ceiling. Good. So we're getting a nice stretch on the back of this right leg. We're breathing. Working the hamstring. Good. So reclining big toe pose can be done without a strap. You just don't get the, you probably won't get the straightness of the leg. It's where we take the index finger, middle finger, we wrap it around the big toe, and we stretch that right foot up. So you can also do it like this if you like. You won't get quite as uh, straight of a leg probably. And my arms are longer, so I, I have a little bit of an easier time. But I find with this right, uh, holding it with the right fingers, is that right shoulder gets some tension. So what's nice is to have that strap. And my shoulders can kind of relax down. Good. We're going to come out of the pose on this side. So bend your right knee. Take that strap. Take that right foot out of the strap. And we're going to wrap it around the bottom of the left foot. Stretch that left foot up to the ceiling. We're holding each end of the strap in each hand. So we're getting a nice stretch on the back of that left leg, the hamstring, the calf, strengthening the muscles, working the hip. Big breaths. Relax your shoulders down because we have the strap so we can relax the shoulders. Feel the left leg. Breathe. Working that hamstring, the calf. Building muscle, building strength, building flexibility. A couple nice breaths. And we're going to come out of this pose. So we'll bend the left knee. We'll bring that left foot down. And then we're going to do the same pose, but we're going to bring the leg out to each side. So take the strap, wrap it around the bottom of the right foot. We're going to stretch the right foot up to the ceiling. Hold both ends of the strap in your right hand. Left arm is at your side, left palm is up. We're gonna inhale, keep weight in this left side of the body. Inhale and open the right leg out to the right. You can slide your hand down the strap, bending your elbow, bringing your elbow to the rest on the floor to kind of prop up, support that right leg. Keep weight in the left side of the body so we don't wanna roll to the right. Our back, our spine is nice and even on the mat. We're not rolling over to the right, but we're getting a big stretch on this inner right thigh, right hip. Strengthening, stretching, <clears throat> building muscle in that right hip. Big, even breaths. We're going to come out of it, so slowly bring the right foot back up to the ceiling. We'll bend the right knee and take that right strap off. And we're going to put the strap around the bottom of the left foot. Stretch your left foot up to the ceiling. Hold both ends of the strap in the left hand. Right arm is at your side. Right palm is up. Keep weight in that right side of the body. And we're going to inhale and open the left leg out to the left. Any amount. It can be just a little bit. Any amount. 
<clears throat> any amount because we want to keep that weight in the right side of the body. Don't roll to the left. Feel that stretch on the inner left hip and thigh. Keep your back pretty flat on the floor and weight in that right side. Big, even breaths. Building strength in the left hip, left leg, flexibility as well. Nice and slow, we're gonna bring that left foot up to the ceiling. We're gonna take that strap off the left side. Set that strap over to the side. Let's hug both knees into the chest. Just roll side to side a couple times. Good. Knees come to center. We're gonna bring our, use your core, bring your feet down to the floor. Roll over onto your side, either side, and come up to sitting. So pose number 10, straight leg twist. So we're gonna sit with both legs stretched out. Pull the hips back a little bit, feet are flexed. We're gonna bend our right knee and bring our right foot to the floor. Right hand's gonna come behind you or beside you, press it into the floor to lengthen the spine. Left hand is on the, le on the right knee. We all, excuse me, we always twist with an exhale. So we're gonna inhale first, exhale, and we're gonna to turn to the right. Pull that right thigh in towards the belly. Keep your left foot flexed, left toes up towards the ceiling, head right over the tailbone, relax the shoulders down, and big slow breaths into the low belly. Try to feel the weight even on both sitting bones. See, are you leaning more to your left or more to your right? And get it nice and even. Each inhale, lengthen the spine. Each exhale, relax into the twist. Breathing into the low belly. Good, we're gonna come out of that. So inhale, come forward. We're gonna stretch the right leg out. Bend the left knee, bring the left foot to the floor. Get the weight even on those sitting bones. Left hand comes behind you or beside you, depending on how long your arms are. Right foot is flexed, left hand, right hand is on the left knee. Inhale, sit tall, lengthen. Exhale, we're gonna to turn to the left. Pull the left thigh into the belly. Keep the right toes pointing up towards the ceiling. Shoulders relaxed, head over tailbone. Nice big breaths into the low belly. Each inhale, sit a little taller, lengthen. <clears throat> Each exhale, relax into the twist. Good, big breaths. Weight even on the sits bones. So are you leaning right? Are you leaning left? Get nice and centered. We're gonna come out of the twist. We're gonna inhale, come forward. Stretch the left leg out, lean back on the hands and just windshield wiper the feet. Good. Next one is a bent knee twist. So we're going to bend both of our knees, feet on the floor. We're going to bring the left heel underneath by our right hip. And we'll scoot the right foot back. Right hand comes behind us or beside us. Left hand on the right knee. Press that right hand into the floor. Inhale, sit tall. Get the weight even on both sit bones. Exhale, we're going to turn to the right. Pull the right thigh into the belly. Relax the shoulders. Feel the weight. Are you more to the right? Are you more to the left? Stay centered, head right over the tailbone. Big, slow breaths into the low belly. So these twists also work our digestion and elimination. When we do the right side first, we're working the ascending colon. When we do the left, we're working the descending colon. That's the way the waste flows through the uh, intestines. Good, big breaths. We're gonna come out of this, inhale, come forward. We're gonna bring the left foot out. We're gonna tuck the right foot under, right heel by the left hip. We can scoot that left foot in a little closer. Left hand comes behind or beside you, right hand on the left knee. We twist with our exhale. So inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, and we're gonna to turn to the left, pull the left thigh into the belly. Relax the shoulders head over the tailbone. Feel the weight distribution. Are you leaning to the right hip? Are you leaning to the left hip? Get nice and even. 
So we want those big breaths into the low belly. We want to feel our belly press into that left thigh, the side working the descending colon. Each inhale, sit a little taller. Each exhale, relax. Good, and we're gonna come out of this twist. So inhale, come forward. We're gonna bring that right foot forward. Lean back on the hands, stretch the legs out. <clears throat> Windshield wiper the feet. Just kind of shake them out a little bit. So that was pose number 11. Pose number 12, Shavasana pose. So we're gonna come all the way down onto our back. This is just a relaxing pose to let all of the previous poses settle into the body, to the joints, to the muscles, to the tissues, to the uh, ligaments, tendons, the fascia. So options for Shavasana pose, final relaxation, legs can be stretched out, knees can be bent. You can have a blanket roll or a bolster under the knees. You can be in cobbler's pose, bottoms of the feet together, knees open. You can be in constructive rest, which is a nice one for low back. Your knees fall in and rest on each other and the feet are a little wide. So get that lower body comfortable. Get the upper body comfortable. Arms at your side, palms up. That's gonna to help to open the chest, open the shoulders. From, we do a lot of forward reaching things and this helps to counteract that forward reaching rounded shoulders. You might even tuck the shoulders down and under and lengthen the arms down by your side. A little tuck of the chin and then relax the neck and the shoulders. And we're gonna breathe into the low belly. Inhale, belly rises. Exhale, belly falls. Let your eyes and jaw relax. Neck, shoulders relax. Arms, hands, fingers relax. The back relaxes, upper back, middle back, low back. Belly soft, hips and pelvis relax. Legs, feet, toes relax. And now here visualize the bones inside the body relaxing, the joints relaxing. Nice, slow inhales, nice, slow exhales. Keep relaxing and re-relaxing the body. Try not to hold any tension anywhere in the body. Knowing that you just did a nice practice to strengthen the bones, to build bone mineral density, to keep yourself strong and active, healthy, as you're in this final relaxation, final shavasana, see yourself healthy, strong, vital, vibrant. Let's wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes, come out of our final relaxation. Rolling over to your side, either side, Use your strong arms, help yourself all the way up into sitting. Sit tall, I like to sit on a yoga block. Sit however is comfortable for your legs. I just sit on a yoga block, Whatever, however you're sitting, legs stretched out, uh, kneeling or legs crossed, we want length in the spine. So scoot the tailbone back a little bit, lift the heart a little bit, pull the belly in and up a little bit. Stack the shoulders over the hips. Feel grounded down through your seat and feel growth up through the spine, all the way through the crown of the head. And just knowing that today, as you worked on these 12 poses for bone health, 12 poses for osteoporosis, anytime you practice yoga, you're improving your balance, your coordination, your range of motion, strength, flexibility. Yoga helps reduce anxiety, uh, helps us have a better posture, lowers our risk of falling. So all of these beneficial side effects from a yoga practice 
right? And um, in a short time, you can really strengthen and improve the body. I'm also going to link that the study, the website, uh, the link to the study, so you can read over it and see what a wonderful um, scientific research was done with this. So it's not just oh, do yoga. It's really based on science and, and measuring their bone density, um, measuring uh, their range of motion and their strength. So I hope you enjoyed this practice today. Use it often. Share it with someone who you think might benefit from it. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment. That helps people find me on YouTube. And until next time, namaste.